to not to hesitate if they're thinking uh, about Korea. Uh, it's a very good place uh, for training, uh, to get knowledge, to get expertise. Because we have a, such a good uh, teaching and educational platform so that we can effectively transfer our own clinical experience to the people who are in need. Welcome to the second half of the special session of Medical Korea 2021. I'm Na Hyun Gyung. For the next hour, we will be talking about Korea as one of the leading healthcare providers in the world. Previously, we talked about how and why international patients are willing to come to Korea to get medical treatment and assistance, but it turns out that it's not just the patients who make the trip. An increasing number of physicians and healthcare professionals come and continue to visit Korea to receive medical training. And that's exactly what we are going to examine right now. So without further ado, let's begin our session with a keynote speech. Hello, my name is Byung So Min, the director of Severance Robot and Minimally Invasive Surgery Center at the Yonsei University Health System. I'm honored to have an opportunity to promote the excellence of Korean medical care. The Severance Robot and Minimally Invasive Surgery Center has 10 robotic surgical systems. Eight of them are for clinical use and two systems for training purpose. And even over laparoscopic surgery, enhancing post-operative recovery, and improving surgical outcomes. We believe our role is growing bigger and bigger as robotic surgery becomes more and more popular. The need for well-trained surgeons to perform robotic surgery is also growing. Since 2008, we've been serving as a dedicated center for robotic surgery training. Our training opportunity opens not only for domestic surgeons, but also for international surgeons. So far, we have trained more than 2,000 surgeons and more than 70% of them are international applicants. Let me show you how the Severance Robo Surgery Center has recruited so many international surgeons. The number of robotic surgery is increasing rapidly worldwide. In 2005, Severance Hospital first introduced the robotic surgery in Korea, and ever since, the case number is rapidly increasing. Last year, more than 3,400 cases of robotic surgery were performed at Severance Hospital, which explained more than 10% of total robotic surgery performed in entire Korea. In 2019, we were the first center in the world that had performed 20,000 cases of robotic surgery. And this year, we are expecting to break our own record by 30,000 cases. We also published more than 350 articles in peer-reviewed journals. We established ourselves as an internationally recognized center for robotic surgery by developing and standardizing many robot surgery procedures for the first time. Much effort has been put into developing a comprehensive training program for robotic surgery. As a result, more than 2,000 surgeons from 38 countries have been trained in our training center. When they return, those surgeons take care of their patients with the skills and knowledge they have learned from Korea. More and more medical professionals are coming to Korean hospital to learn state-of-the-art medical care. Korea has advanced industrial technology support for the cutting-edge healthcare, such as robotic surgery. 
which will lead to continuous innovation for future healthcare. We want to collaborate to achieve sustainable innovation in healthcare technology with other countries. We truly want to share our experience of the advanced Korean medical care with medical professionals from all over the world. Thank you for listening. As I mentioned earlier, we will delve deeper into the topic of Korea's medical training programs and how hospitals are striving to foster professionalism among physicians here. And in order to do that, we have yet another excellent group of panelists here in the studio with me. First, Dr. Jung Woo-jin from Seoul National University, Bundang Hospital. Next, uh, Dr. Kuman Jung from the Cheongdam Uridul Spine Hospital and Ms. Lina Park from Korea Health Industry Development Institute. And last but not least, an active social media influencer, Adrian Hill from the US. Welcome everybody to the program. So let's start with the current state of things. Uh, Dr. Jung, I was told that you are in charge of training the visiting physicians from abroad. How many international fellows do you have at your hospital currently? Um, currently, um, uh, we have Dr. Ramla. Uh, she's the only one right now because of the COVID situation. Um, but uh, prior to that, uh, we had uh, many fellows from many Asian countries, um, including the Middle East, the Southeast Asia, and the CIS states. Uh, as I understand, uh, Seoul National University has a total of about 400 uh, international fellows from uh, various different countries. Mm -hmm. And what about you, uh, Dr. Kim? At your hospital, how many fellows do you usually have? Currently, because of the COVID situation, uh, there's only one fellow uh, who's actually in quarantine right now. But um, s since we are, uh, we are specialized in spine surgery, our training course involves uh, uh, teaching of the minimum invasive spine uh, procedures. And it began in 2003, and uh, we have over 800 doctors that have uh, participated uh, in this program over the years. Oh, so 800? Yes. That, that is a remarkable number, right? Yes, it's a large number, yes. And I will get back to you later in the program, uh, Dr. Kim, but I want to move on to Ms. Park. The name of your unit is Medical Training Division, so I would say that it is self-explanatory, but would you be able to uh, tell us what the role and responsibility of your team are? Yes, Kitty performed multiple tasks to develop healthcare industry in general. I'm in charge of medical training program for foreign medical practitioner. Uh, and my team manages many different training programs such as Medical Korea Academy. All right, I'm sure you, we will get a, a chance to have an in-depth discussion later on. Uh, thank you, Ms. Park. And now, Ms. Hill, you are creating some video contents, YouTube uh, contents related to medical services, Korea's medical services. And you said, I hear that you think some of the cities in Korea are excellent choice for, um, de excellent destination for getting medical treatment. Why, why do you say that? Yeah, so um, I think Korea is a really appealing place for foreigners to come for medical treatment. The first reason would just be abundance. Um, coming from kind of a large metropolitan city in the States, I was really surprised at how many hospitals there are here, whether it's a big hospital or a small hospital, chances are you're not gonna have to go very far um, treatments. And the, the second thing is honestly just the care that you do receive from not just doctors, but the nurses as well. Um, I have had a major surgery in Korea and I was blown away actually by how much from, you know, starting from the consultation all the way to the aftercare, how much the doctor really seemed to care about me and how even though I'm in a country where I'm not speaking, you know, the language fluently, I always, every step of the way, I felt like I was informed on what was going on before, during and after the surgery. Mm, I see. Yeah, before we uh, proceed any further, let's take a look at this uh, video clip first. We were able to speak to some of the visiting fellows uh, getting training here in Korea. So let's have a look.
she would like to be the top leader in their own society. We develop our own surgical technique and concept of shoulder and elbow surgery, and now she brought all her knowledge, experience, and information to Indonesia to be the leader and teacher of that society. During my training, I'm grateful that I am able to experience an exceptional clinical training, which is very beneficial for my future career in my country. Under the direct supervision of Professor John, I am able to publish a 36 SCI index papers and co-author a total of 28 papers. Because of this achievement, I am very thankful to be offered a position in the Faculty of Medicine, Trisakti University, Jakarta, Indonesia. I mainly assist him in surgery, making sure that everything is uh, ready, available, and also um, trying to start and co uh, creating the tunnel that leads to the thyroid, and then from here on, he can take on the surgery. Before I came to Korea, uh, I had just like a, a really set a goal and really, um, let's just say, directed vision. But when I came here, it, it slightly changed. Like for example, I wasn't um, thinking about robotic surgery. But when I came to Korea, uh, I was really considered and I loved it uh, after the first time I saw it. It is a really great chance, actually. It gave me a great chance and great opportunity to look into all the new things that I, not, uh, I haven't actually seen in Kuwait. All the things that I learned here, I will apply them to Kuwait. So hopefully, uh, I'll be part of that development and these steps uh, to uh, make um, Kuwait even um, more developed and higher than it is. Well, we saw a familiar face there, Dr. Zhang. Um, would you be able to elaborate a bit more on what Dr. Mohammed is being trained on exactly? Okay, so um, uh, her area of expertise and also mine uh, is the um, head and neck surgery. And uh, it's an oncologic surgery um, dealing with cancers of the tongue, um, the tonsils, the larynx, which is the voice box, and uh, not to mention the salivary glands and the thyroid gland. Um, so um, this part of the um, body uh, actually contains uh, vital functions uh, such as uh, breathing, uh, swallowing, and talking. And if you take any part of this away, um, the functions will be uh, greatly compromised. So it's very important that you take as little as possible and reconstruct it um, as if nothing had happened. Uh, so um, Dr. Ramla actually initially wanted to uh, train more on um, head and neck reconstruction and uh, now her interest uh, is also changing to the robotic surgery. Mm. And in the video, it, it seemed like she was very also um, content with how she was involved in the research projects and how she was able to publish uh, many articles and journals. Is there a particular reason why? 
So um, in many of the um, Asian countries uh, who come to um, our hospital, um, uh, they want to have more clinical expertise uh, and deliver the state-of-the-art um, medicine to their patients. Uh, not many of these countries are oriented in uh, doing research and uh, trying to deliver the current, uh, trying to heighten uh, the current standards to the next level. Mm, I see. And how did Dr. Mohammed uh, come to work with you in the first place? Um, so um, I think she saw us on the internet and uh, she was very interested in coming to Korea uh, in the first place. Um, uh, she found out that there's a program in the KHIDI uh, which is called the uh, Korea Medical Training Program and she applied for it. Uh, she has been supported by her government uh, to come to Korea. Um, yeah, that's why she came to our um, hospital. Mm. So it, it was on a national level program then? Yes, it see. is. Mm -hmm. ah, okay, so I, I'm thinking there must be many different uh, programs offered by each hospital in Korea, whether it be private or public. Um, so it would be very informative if we are able to see uh, what kind of programs each hospitals offer and what are available. So I believe uh, Ms. Park has prepared a presentation exactly on that. So let's give the floor to Ms. Park. I am Lina Park, head of the training program for foreign medical practitioner at Korea Health Industry Development Institute. Today, Korea has become a popular destination for world-leading medical practitioners to seek and expand their medical knowledge. Korea has been praised by numerous countries for many different reasons. Trainees from abroad were not only impressed by Korea's advanced medical technology and cutting-edge technology, but also the humility and kindness shown by Korean people. The trainees also appreciated Korea's eagerness to each share to its knowledge and expertise with developing countries. Korea has become an ideal training ground for medical practitioners to hone their skills, and these statistics tell us why. From 2010 to 2014, Korea's five-year cancer survival rate was 61.3%, outperforming its peer in the developed world. In particular, the survival rate of gastric cancer is twice as high in Korea compared to that of the U.S., and the UK. Also, Korea has a high success rate in organ transplantation procedure, including liver, pancreas, and kidney transplant. The 11-year survival rate is 80.44% for all organs combined. Moreover, Korea's healthcare infrastructure is in far better state than many OECD countries. There are 12.4 hospital beds in Korea for every 1,000 people, which is nearly two and a half times higher than OECD average. There are also 38.60 scanners for 1 million people, which is almost one and a half times higher, and the number of MRI units is also close to double the OECD average. ARM is the sum of the world's best medical technology and cutting-edge devices. There is a no doubt that Korea has turned itself into a new learning hall for foreign medical practitioners. Now, let's look at the program being offered by Korea government for foreign medical professionals looking to train here. The government supports a wide range of training programs in the healthcare sector, notwithstanding other programs run by private institutions. Under the guidance of the Ministry of Health and Welfare, public institutions have created systematic training programs in healthcare delivery, health insurance, and management, targeting foreign medical practitioners and public officials. Through these government-led programs, a total of nearly 2,000 people from 75 different countries have been trained, including those from Mongolia and China in Asia, Russia and Kazakhstan in the CIS region, Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan in the Middle East, and Ethiopia and Ghana in Africa. Likewise, multiple supportive uh, frameworks play a critical role in attracting foreign medical practitioners to Korea. 
The cost of the training program is either fully or partially subsidized by the government to lower the entry of barrier for international healthcare workers in learning about Korean medical practices. Also, we provide the personal assistant and concierge services to help the trainee focus on their education rather than get restricted. At the end of the training program, trainees are eligible to receive a certificate from a publicly approved government institution. In addition, we host local alumni events and conferences to strengthen our international networks. On the other hand, there are other ways to learn about Korean healthcare from the comfort of your own home. We are now running an online medical training program to help people stay safe amid COVID-19. Trainees can learn about Korea's advanced medical practices and technology without visiting the countries. The strength of our program is backed by inclusive culture, cutting-edge medical technology, and robust government support. These are the foundation of Korea's future as a leading hub of education for foreign medical practitioners. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, uh, Ms. Park, for that. So it's not just one, obviously, but there are many different types of programs uh, with uh, different purposes, I guess. Yes, Kitty runs an invitational and paid uh, training program. Invitation and training program include Medical Korea Academic Global, Korea Mongolia Seoul Project, and Korea Russia uh, training program. It takes uh, six weeks and re recruit. Uh, medical practitioner from all around the world. And once they selected, uh, each trainee is assigned to Korean medical institution to receive medical training. The kitty pay for the full cost of the training program and their accommodation for a training program. And uh, since 2007, a uh, total about uh, 700 people from all around the world uh, have completed our invitation and training program. Mm, that is amazing. Um, are, are they satisfied with the programs after they're done? Yeah, definitely they are really satisfied our program. The kitty also runs a paid training program as through a bilateral agreement with, uh, in the state level. It includes a one to two year fellowship program for doctors and a three years residency program for dentists. Mm, I see. So, so the doctors after the, the fellows, are they satisfied with the program after they're done? Uh, the, actually, the invitational training program through observation is quite popular among trainees. Since they can uh, learn and experience the core medical practice in a short period of time, also the, the long-term uh, clinical training program is a uh, high uh, satisfaction rate uh, among trainees because they, are, uh, they, are, they take part in actual clinical um, practice with Korean medical practitioners. Well, as a matter of fact, I believe we have someone standing by for us to tell us more about his experiences as a trainee um, here in Korea at a Korean hospital. hospital. Uh, Dr. Amro Hassan Agil, I believe he is standing by for us. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me over here. So uh, you are currently in one of the fellowship training programs at the Asan Medical Center. What, uh, what made you choose a Korean hospital? Actually, I am a fully certified general surgeon practitioner, and I was looking for a sub-specialization in a very good training center. So I was, I was contacting my friends who already finished their programs here in Korea, so they advised me with this program. So I applied to Korea Medical, which is a program run by uh, Kidi and Asa Medical Center and supported and paid by our government. And fortunately, I'm here in Asa Medical Center, which is, uh, uh, which is the one of the world top leading centers in hepatobiliary and pancreatic surgery and liver transplant surgery, because they have the huge numbers with their very good expertise. And more importantly, is the out, uh, outstanding results and their state-of-the-art methods and techniques. As mentioned before, the uh, uh, Korea Medical 
uh, practitioners is why the spectrum has huge numbers has their own uh, developed uh, procedures and, uh, and the needs of the patients are always met. And the whole system is, is directed to help the patients. And the medical training is not about certificates only. It's about providing the patients with the best service, which is the noble thing that the human can, being can do, which is I'm looking for here to learn and practice in my country when I come back. So what will be um, your piece of advice for those considering uh, doing their fellowship here in uh, any uh, kind of medical training or any kind of medical pro uh, program, training program here in Korea? Yeah, I think uh, training program, medical training program in Korea has the potential to become uh, one of the world's top leading training centers. Uh, and my advice is to the people who wants to come over. There are some advices I always tell it, uh, tell them. Uh, first of all, you should work on the plant uh, specialty before you come over because the training here is so advanced. So you should have the background and the basics uh, very strongly because this will make that your training over here much way smoother and more of fruitful. All right. Well, I do certainly hope that you will be able to take only the good memories and good experiences uh, from your training and fellowship program from Korea. Thank you, uh, Dr. Agil, for joining us today and sharing your stories with us. Certainly. Thank you very much. So it seems like most of the training programs are offered through public organizations, but, but I'm, I'm sure there are also courses uh, offered by private hospitals as well. And Uridil Spine Hospital is one good example. So what would you say are um, some of the qualities that your hospital offers that, that, that differentiate them from other hospitals from different parts of the world? So the most important um, aspect, uh, which is known around the world, is the endoscopic spine surgery which is part of the minimal invasive spine surgery, um, which is part of the minimal invasive spine surgery. Endoscopic spine surgery is a, it's not very new, but it's, it has been around for several decades. Um, but it, it is m much more advanced in our country compared to some other countries that come to learn about it. Um, it involves uh, using a small tube or working channel to go into the spine and treat spinal diseases which were um, in the past only treated using open surgery. So this is a, it is a much more sim simpler uh, treatment method that we can use in uh, all ages. And the most, the, the most advantageous part is that when patients go through these types of treatment, they can go back to their everyday lives fairly quickly. Mm, I see. I can see that Dr. Jung is nodding when, when Dr. Kim is talking. Um, but for me, because I'm not a physician, there are some terms that, are not, that I'm not so familiar with. So I think, I think it will help me better understand, and for our viewers as well, if we could actually see, uh, literally see, what Dr. Kim is talking about. So we have a video clip prepared, so let's take a look first. Uh, 
그리고 이 내시경 모니터 화면 그리고 또 투시경 화면을 이제 같이 보는 것이 중요하고 기초로 이 수술실 안에서 이제 어떤 일이 벌어지는지 수술실 전체를 이제 조망하는 장면이 좀 필요합니다. 그래서 우리가 이런 것들이 다 네트워킹해서 한 화면으로 보여줄 수 있게 어, 다 셋업을 했고요. process, the, the robotic surgery, the meticulous technique in and of itself, I think is very impressive. But I was also very impressed by the live surgery system. Could you, could you tell us more about it, Dr. Kim? Well, um, the purpose of this live surgery, well, it's, it, it has become more important recently because of the, uh, the COVID pandemic. So since um, a lot of the foreign doctors who used to come to learn about these procedures, um, since they can't come uh, because all the restrictions. I guess, I mean, meeting and exchanging information online and exchanging skill sets, that's the new normal, I guess, now that we are living nowadays. And, and it seems like Korea is on the right track. And we are utilizing, um, we are in the front forefront of utilizing and making this uh, technology available. So I think I would like to take the moment and thank all the physicians' efforts and the supporting staff for making this happen. Um, now let's move on to finding out what happens after these incoming fellows, visiting fellows, uh, complete their training here in Korea. Dr. Jung, I would imagine you would still keep in touch with some of the fellows that have returned to their home country after completing their uh, program here in Korea. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Um, so I have had uh, several fellows um, train with me and go back to their home country. Uh, so uh, some of the uh, fellows that I remember are um, Dr. Soko and Nara, uh, and they're from Mongolia. And uh, they went back to their home country and they actually invited me to come to Ulaanbaatar where their hospital is. And uh, she actually get, um, gathered a lot of difficult patients uh, for me to examine and uh, give my opinion on. And uh, she still, uh, both of them still ask me through the Kakao Talk. Um, another fellow that I remember is uh, Miss Anna Frolova from um, Russia. And uh, uh, she actually came back to our hospital four times. Uh, she wanted to improve her skills and uh, medical knowledge. And so that made her come back uh, four times. Um, another one is from Malaysia, um, Dr. Um, Liu Liu Tung, and uh, he's actually taken up a position in University of Malaya, uh, which is uh, one of the most prestigious um, university hospitals in Malaysia, so I'm very proud of him. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Now, there, there, there must be a reason why some of these uh, medical professionals choose to revisit Korea and continue honing their skills. And for more, we have Professor Woo Hyang Hee from the City of Hope Comprehensive Cancer Center at the U.S. state of California standing by for us. Uh, hello, Dr. Wu. Thank you so much for having me. I send you greetings from Southern California at City of Hope. It is my pleasure to be with you on the web today for... Medical Korea 2021. I was told that you had visited Korea many times for training purposes. Could you tell us why and what kind of lessons uh, and techniques you uh, took from those visits? So um, during my training uh, to become a surgeon scientist, I actually um, spent some of um, my medical school and my residency and my clinical fellowship in the United States. I did, of course, my medical school in the United States. I did my residency at Columbia University and I now work in the United States and I grew up here. But um, for those periods of time, when I went to Korea as a rotating medical student and a resident and my fellowship, I believe that they were um, fairly impactful sort of career changing moments um, in my career to become uh, the surgeon that I am today. Uh, perhaps it, it, it is based on my pride of being Korean American and being able to learn from the culture and the medical advances that I noticed in Korea. So the reason I went to do my fellowship in um, robotics and gastric cancer to learn 
from um, my mentor, Dr. Ujin Hyung, Professor Hyung at Yonsei University was, um, I had done a rotation at Harlem University during my residency with Columbia University Medical Center Exchange Program. And I saw um, Dr. Hyung doing a robotic gastric cancer operation. And I saw Dr. No Song Hun do an open gastrectomy, both of which were such just amazing operations. Especially exciting for me was the the prospect of doing cancer operations, complex cancer operations using the robotic technology, which was back then, 11 years ago, I'm dating myself, but 11 years ago, it was fairly new to the abdominal cancer world. And so um, my desire to go back to Korea for that training was there after those um, short periods of time that I witnessed other surgeons in Korea do such amazing work. Um, and the advances in medical and surgical technology that was happening in Korea at the time uh, that was pretty globally, um, you know, uh, pioneering at the time. Hmm. And I hope those uh, pieces of knowledge uh, were proven useful back in the U.S. How how much did it help, uh, if I may ask? So I would say that there were Um, There was some very unique and advanced training that I could only gain in Korea at the time that was uh, ideal, especially in the high volume of cancer care for stomach cancer patients and the application of robotics in the treatment of uh, stomach cancer. The volume in the United States for such cases is not that high per surgeon or hospital. Met thousands of stomach cancer patients and especially important was the technique and the insight in in how to do stomach cancer surgery by Dr. Hyung and all of the other Korean surgeons. We wrote many papers. Um, He taught us how to set up databases for clinical research. And it wasn't just learning about the technique but about evaluation and improvement and pioneering and progress and collaboration amongst international surgeons because we had the Japanese surgeons, we had uh, Turkish surgeons, Chinese surgeons, all would come and US surgeons would come to train in Korea, especially at Yonsei University. And we learned all from each other And to this day, that was 11 years ago, to this day, we still keep in touch as the G6 Plus and we uh, collaborate. We still continue to meet each other at conferences and research together and pioneer in new ways to improve gastric cancer outcome together. So I know that every year that I go back to Korea, I really look forward to the conferences because I learned so much And it's not just the Koreans that share, the Korean doctors or surgeons, but it's like um, that it becomes a mecca of global attraction to Korea to learn from each other. But Korea has been able to uh, provide very, very high level academic um, platforms of um, conference, medical conferences in a beautiful country where everyone wants to visit because I look forward to my trip to Korea every year. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's been a beautiful uh, growth of both to see as a Korean American and very proud to see the advancements that Korea has made and its contribution to the world in medicine, science and technology. And I take, you know, I, I as part, being Korean American and, and I, there's a lot of pride in that living in Southern California. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wu, for taking the time to talk to us today. That was Dr. Wu Yang Yi from the City of Hope uh, Comprehensive Cancer Center. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. I enjoyed it very much. All right. Thank you once again. Now, Dr. Jung, I believe you've had your fair share of experiences in receiving medical training in the U.S. So in your opinion, what are some of the qualities that you think uh, stand out from the Korean training programs? Okay. um, The hospitals in the U.S. uh, have very high standards, uh, but the number of patients that you can actually uh, see in a day or uh, during your uh, fellowship uh, training time uh, is much more intense in Korea. 
Uh, whereas uh, there are some uh, other countries in uh, the Asian region uh, where they have a lot more uh, patient volume than Korea, uh, but uh, the standards of medicine in Korea is uh, world class, as Dr. Wu has mentioned. So uh, coming to Korea, I think, has the advantage of uh, both sides. Um, you can um, um, enjoy a high vo volume of patients, a lot of complex cases, and at the same time, uh, the facilities, the support of the uh, hospital, uh, and the research uh, facilities, very uh, world standard. So uh, that's one of the um, things that uh, many doctors who want to be competent uh, in their area uh, to be attracted to Korea. Dr. Chang mentioned having Korea having a high volume of patients per physician, but any thoughts on that, uh, Ms. Hill? Yeah, so I think the high density in Korea plays a huge part into why people want to come over here to study medicine. Um, it's really hard to compare a place like America to Korea just because America where I'm from is such a huge country. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that to have a simple procedure, they might have to fly across the country to see the right doctor for that um, versus in Korea, because there is such a high population density. Um, you usually don't have to do that, especially if you're in a metropolitan area. And I think it kind of goes hand in hand with the great um, medical care system that there is in Korea. Because of that, uh, you will see a lot more people, I think, in the hospitals because um, medical care is so much more accessible here compared to a place uh, like America where they don't have as great of a system as Korea. So you are a YouTube creator, uh, you know, making contents, producing contents related to Korea's medical services right. and assistance. Why do you think doctors or physicians would choose to come to Korea to receive their medical training? Um, I think a lot of it goes back to what Dr. Wu was saying, um, the amount of conferences here, the high technology, and um, being able to be in a place like Seoul, where there are so many large, prestigious col colleges, universities, in a small area that you know you could study at um, versus being in maybe their home country there might not be as many hospitals um, with as good of technology as what Korea has. Okay thank you Ms. Hill for sharing your thoughts. Now I think we need to move on to our next guest on the line and uh, Dr. Kim I believe this physician uh, worked with you at Uridil Hospital. Yes um, this is Dr. Paul Hu from Kim Cod medical center in the United States. He first um, learned of our uh, technique through a lecture that we did uh, in a uh, symposium that was held in the United States. Mm. Okay, so let's say hello to Dr. Hu from the Cape Cod Healthcare Center. Uh, hello there, doctor. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's wonderful to be here. So let me first ask you about how and why you decided to come to Korea and spend time at the Uridol uh, Spine Hospital. Well, the word of the hospital is world renowned for endoscopic spine surgery. And I wanted to become the best spine surgeon in the world. And so I felt that I needed to train at the best hospital in the world from the best surgeons in the world in endoscopic spine surgery. Hmm. If I may ask, how would you evaluate uh, the quality and standard of knowledge and uh, technique you learned from Korea? So I'm a neurosurgeon and I do mostly spine surgery. And the word of the hospital, specifically Dr. Sang Ho Lee and Dr. Jun Sok Bae, are very famous for endoscopic spine surgery. So that is a way of doing removing disc herniations that are pinching nerves and doing it in a very minimally invasive way that doesn't harm the body's tissues. And so it's in its, that technology and these techniques are in its infancy in the United States, but they're very mature in Korea and specifically at Wurdal Hospital. And so that's why I came to Wurdal to learn. And how did your colleagues uh, react to what you learned from Korea? So the physicians here in the United States are all very interested. And many of the young doctors, they learn in the teaching hospitals, just like they do in Korea. And I've given several lectures now at the Harvard teaching hospitals, um, as well as Dartmouth College, which is also another Ivy League institution. And they're all very interested in learning these, these techniques. 
And you were able to demonstrate the techniques uh, you learned from here to your colleagues, I understand. So actually, yes, we've taught uh, many, some of the surgeons at the Harvard hospitals, as well as uh, Johns Hopkins um, and uh, the Dartmouth, uh, as well as Rhode Island Hospital. And, you know, it's very, very gratifying to teach these new techniques because it requires a different way of thinking. And so when I came to Waterdell, um, I had to learn how to think differently. And I accomplished that there. Hmm. And what's this a story about securing payments by insurance companies for a spine surgery procedure? Could you, could you fill us in? So in the United States, the way medical bills are paid is that a procedure is typically assigned one or more codes. Uh, they're called CPT or current procedural terminology. And that is determined by the American Medical Association. There was a code, a CPT code, for endoscopic spine surgery, a very specific code. But even though a code exists, the insurance companies do not necessarily pay for it. So I um, took a summary of the medical literature, most of which has come from Korea, and presented that literature to the medical boards of the insurance companies and was able to convince them to cover the procedure to cover and pay for the code. So now in the area where I live, I have no trouble performing the surgery. The insurance companies are willing to pay for it. And a lot of that was because of the research and the papers that have been published by the surgeons in Korea. Uh, I was able to use that data uh, to present objective results that the insurance companies could justify paying for the procedure. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hill, for giving us your valuable time today. Well, thank you very much. This was a wonderful experience. Now, that was uh, Dr. Paul Hill from the Cape Cod Healthcare Center in the U.S. Um, Dr. Kim, forgive my ignorance, but could you tell us a bit more about the, the meaning of having insurance companies pay for that specific pr procedure that uh, Dr. Hill mentioned? I think that the most uh, significant part that we can take away from this is that a surgical procedure that is much more advanced in another country, in Korea, has been accepted by the United States as a, uh, as a treatment option for these types of um, spinal diseases. So I, can, I, I think we can have a little pride in that we, our research and our data help the doctors in the United States um, accept a procedure uh, that they are not familiar with. I think that's the most important part. Mm. Okay, so that, that must have been another great stride that Korean physicians had made. Um, now, Ms. Park, I have a question for you. Uh, the KHIDI offers a lot of online courses that educating physicians can take. Could you give us a brief overview of the programs? Uh, Kitty has created an me uh, online medical training course uh, called Medical Korea Academy E-Class. Actually, it composed of seven uh, online courses. Uh, including three surgical skills, hepatobiliary and pancreatic surgery, and colorectal surgery, and gastrointestinal surgery. Four other courses, including echocardiography, and endoscopy, and medical ICT, and infection control courses. And they all include video lectures uh, with top-notch Korean professor who covers everything from basic theory to advanced medical technology. So once the trainee finishes watching the, all the video lectures, and they can take a certificate issued by Kitty. And how are they received uh, by the doctors? Uh, actually, last year we launched the pilot program for that. So, total 83 people from 16 different countries have completed 109 courses. The survey results show about 87% satisfaction rate among the trainees, and about 92% responded that they wanted to enroll in our offline medical training program. Hmm. So if, if the Institute has any plans to expand the scope of the programs, please uh, do share them with us. 
As you know, uh, due to COVID-19 pandemic, we cannot uh, hold in-person training programs. So we, we shift our focus and expand the online training programs. Uh, in addition to our current lineup of uh, training courses, we will develop a variety of other online courses. Uh, to meet the demands of foreign medical practitioners and government officers. All right, thank you, Ms. Park, for sharing your insight with us. Uh, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. If you have any last words you'd like to share with us, uh, now is the time to speak up. So shall we start with uh, Dr. Chung? Uh, okay, so um, I think one of the uh, reasons uh, why many international um, doctors are attracted to coming to Korea uh, is the software rather than the hardware. So. Uh, in our hospital, uh, we have uh, very good facilities, um, equipment such as robot and not, uh, but I think it's the personnel, uh, the high quality of medicine, and uh, the research facilities that we have, and the high volume of patients that attract the uh, uh, doctors from abroad. And I think that's where Korea stands. Dr. Kim? Yes, um, I think that we should take great pride in that uh, we're advancing the, the field of medicine all around the world and that many doctors from foreign countries are coming here to learn more about our medicine. Uh, and also that um, we hope that Urida Spine Hospital will help in advancing the field of minimal spine surgery all around the world. And Ms. Park? Yes, uh, we will devote ourselves to create more reliable and comfortable a training environment in Korea. And lastly, Ms. Hill. Um, I think coming from the patient's standpoint over here, um, I would just really encourage any foreigner that is interested in coming to Korea in the future um, to really trust the doctors here. Uh, from uh, the American standpoint, back when I was in the West, I think we're really uninformed on from the patient side as to how advanced uh, the medical system is here. So if you do have the chance, no matter where you're from, to come to Korea, I would definitely um, have faith and put trust into the doctors here. All right, thank you very much all four of you for being here today and sharing your valuable time and knowledge and stories with us today. Now we've come to the end of this special two-part series of Medical Korea 2021. In both sessions, I believe we were able to look at where Korea's medical industry and services stand in the international arena, listening to stories from both patients and doctors. We do hope that these sessions were useful and informative to everyone who has been watching. And on that note, I must say thank you for watching. We will see you next time.